Hello everybody, this is Dan Bigman. I am your GPR professor from LearnGPR.com and I'm very uh, 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 blessed today to be hanging out in the ProSec playground in Switzerland. And I'm here with the resident GPR expert, Guido, from Italy. And uh, we're bringing you a video today that's interesting because I, you know, I'm very lucky that I get to teach probably more people on Earth about GPR. But I'm also lucky that I probably have the most teachers on earth uh, uh, who teach me about GPR. And so I learn something new every single day. And over the last two days hanging out with Guido, he's shown me quite a few uh, interesting things that I've never thought of before. And so what we're going to do today is show you another way to calibrate depth with your ground penetrating radar, especially for concrete. Um, I've done a lot of videos about uh, using hyperbola fitting, which is an excellent, efficient, estimate of wave velocity in order to get the depth on your targets. But really the best way to do it is if you have some sort of direct measurement. So for utility locating, for example, if you have an exposed utility or pipe, you can run your GPR next to it, record the signal, measure the depth of the exposed pipe, and then adjust the depth of your signal so you have a really accurate wave velocity and depth on your uh, soil conditions. So a similar thing you can do with concrete, usually you can't drill into the concrete first and find the rebar, but you can use a second instrument to help give you some information uh, on uh, 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 the depth of the rebar. And so what we're going to show today is a cover meter or profoscope. Um, so this profoscope here, uh, manufactured by ProSec, um, gives you the location of, of of uh, uh, shallow rebar, it'll give you the depth of the shallow rebar or the cover um, to within one millimeter, so that's pretty accurate for GPR's uh, concern, and it will, under good conditions, give you rebar diameter. So we're going to use this to find the depth of the top layer of rebar, and then use that number to calibrate the depth for our hyperbola that we record with the GPR right here. So Rita's going to go ahead and kind of demonstrate and what we'll do is we're going to start by actually collecting a line scan with the GPR. So we'll turn it on. It's going to heat up for, for just a second. It's ready to go. Um, press go. And as I start to move it, obviously... Uh, is it here? There we go. So I start to move it, it'll start to record my hyperbola, which are representative of rebar. And so as I'm going back, right, here's one signal, okay, here's another signal. You can see this on the actual screen, right? So there's the top of one, there's another one at the peak, there's another one. So how deep are these actually uh, uh, within this slab right here? So in order to find that out, we're not going to use the dielectric, really. What we'll use is the profoscope in order to find sure. it. So go ahead, Guido. At the current method. So this baby is very simple to use and it's quite limited in capability. Mm -hmm. I mean... Certainly compared to GPR. Absolutely. But it has a good function that's really specific. So its weakness becomes its strength in terms of being totally independent. Okay, now I'm marking this rebar here. And my statement is we are at 23 mm plus minus one in this range. Mm -hmm. I don't care whether it's green, fresh, old, porous country. This thing is totally unsensitive to mm -hmm. anything else. Okay. Weak point or strong point. So, so the accuracy with a, with a, with a, what would be the accuracy for, the, for, for depth for the GPR to find a rebar? Plus or minus, what do you think? Oh, on a safe side, I would claim something like plus minus 5 mm. Okay, and for this? Plus or minus 1. So this is a more accurate tool to find cover to the, to the top layer of rebar. Okay? Um, okay, so now we have 23 mm. So in this, uh, uh, you know, on our actual console here, our data logger, which in this case is, the, is an iPad, how would you go about positioning this response to its actual, you know, location? Okay, you know, yeah. we've discussed it 
uh, a lot and there are many approaches. Our approach in Prozac is derives from a constant manufacturer D0 offset, which actually allow us, I'm trying to pinpoint this specific rebar once I get a decent gain. Okay. Now, old school guys, my appreciate the a scan on the on the left. Our approach in Prosec is use the envelope curve and not the only the signal curve, and it simplifies things so that you basically pinpoint the max maximum of the envelope curve. That is exactly the same criterion used for assigning um, uh, the ground reflection. The ground reflection. Right. And for those of you who don't know what the envelope curve is, check out my video on the Hibbert transform because I explain what that is and it's about the absolute amount of energy that comes back from, uh, uh, from a response. Okay, so now we've found the rebar, we've adjusted our gains, and we have it to where we think the depth, you know, uh, the actual rebar is. And so we mark it with that. And then how do we adjust that to 23 millimeters? Because this is a little bit off, right? Okay. I mean, for for what, what we have there. Okay. So if we want to put it in for 23, what do you do? We got a simplified procedure when assigning a known depth. At the moment, I have a calculated depth of 26 because I happen to have a dielectric constant of 7. Mm -hmm. It was just there. Mm -hmm. Okay, but now if I say that this depth is not 26, but it's uh, 23, my dielectric constant will be slightly modified to 8.8, uh, .8, as a matter mm -hmm. of fact. That's okay, so now recent that's... Recent block. Right, and so that's put that actual target in its place that we know to plus or minus one millimeter. And so we know that the rest of this is gonna be accurate. So if you're doing things like how thick is the rebar, I'm sorry, how thick is the concrete slab? Finding the rebar with the cover meter, getting the exact depth to plus minus one millimeter and adjusting that location for it will then allow an accurate depth for the actual re, uh, uh, slab thickness. So it's a very good, useful tool. It's not very expensive uh, in comparison to, to what a GPR costs. And it has a lot of really useful, practical application in trying to determine depth. How about we try what you just mentioned? Mm -hmm. I yep. mean, fair. Now I would expect that when I pinpoint my back wall, it should be I am reading now a 14.7. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And the truth is 15.1. So with that depth you get you get within what is that four millimeters? Exactly. So it's a four millimeter difference uh, in total for the entire slab, which from my experience is very, very accurate. <laughs> you know, I mean it's very rare that that, that occurs. And again, in, in part, there's some subjectivity to, to this, right? So I would probably have put it down a little bit, um, it, you know, maybe to some, you know, something, but, but it depends where you put it, right? So if you're going with the peak, you know, then it was 14.7. I'm going to go down a little bit here. Now I screwed it up. You see? Let me see here. So 14 point, you know, seven on the peak is, is, is a very, very close estimate to what it really was in the real life. So good, useful tool, quick and easy to do while you're going. And now it's calibrated. If you're working on a construction site, it's going to be pretty similar. You may want to do this once or twice. Um, but that's uh, uh, it. So one other way you can do this, not everybody may have the function to go in and, and identify the depth and put that actual depth in there. So the alternative that you could use if you don't have that feature on your GPR is you can um, do a hyperbola fit like I've discussed often and move your hyperbola okay, to where the peak of the envelope is. And then you can see my 2.1 centimeters. I can just adjust this using my, dia my dielectric, no, hang on a second. My dielectric constant, it's gonna show me where I am, right? So now I go to 2.3 centimeters, which is equivalent for those of you like me from the US, 
uh, to 23 millimeters. And, uh, and now it's done, it's adjusted. So you can do it either with a setting that says, here's the depth, or you can use your dielectric constant, adjust it until your response appears at that depth. So thank you so much, I appreciate it. Thank you ProSec for letting me play around in your, uh, uh, your wonderful space um, that, that all GPR practitioners would love to uh, uh, hang out in. And um, thank you for everybody, go be great, go do you know, excellent work with GPR, and uh, go to learngpr.com, put your name and email address in, and we will send you videos like this every single week. And make sure you subscribe to the Learn GPR YouTube channel. Thank you so much. Thanks a lot, man. Thank you.